Elizabeth was born on the 7th of September, 1533. Her childhood was not happy. She was two years old when her mother, Anne Boleyn, was beheaded. She spent most of her early life at Hatfield House, away from her father, King Henry VIII. However, Henry wanted his daughter to have the best education. Roger Astrum, a great scholar and humanist, was Elizabeth's private teacher. She was very intelligent, witty, and enjoyed learning. She could read, write, and speak Latin, Greek, French, Spanish, Italian, and Welsh fluently. Elizabeth loved riding horses, hunting, and dancing. Like her father, she had a talent for music and played the lute and the virginals. Unlike her father, she was very thrifty and did not like spending money. Elizabeth wasn't beautiful, but she was elegant. She was thin, of medium height, and very vain. She had red hair, expressive eyes, and lovely hands. When Henry VIII died in 1547, Edward VI became king at the age of nine. But his reign was short. He died of tuberculosis when he was only 15. In 1553, his half-sister Mary, Catherine of Aragon's daughter, became queen. Her mother was a Catholic and she wanted England to be a Catholic country again. Protestants were persecuted and almost 300 were killed. For this reason, she was also known as Bloody Mary. Young Elizabeth was in danger because she was a Protestant and was very popular with the people. Queen Mary thought Elizabeth plotted against her and imprisoned her in the Tower of London in 1554. Elizabeth never forgot this terrible experience. After two months, Mary freed her. On the night of the 17th of November, 1558, Queen Mary died. The bells of London rang and everyone celebrated. Young Elizabeth was the new queen. Elizabeth became queen at the age of 25. Like others of her time, Elizabeth believed in astrology. Her astrologer was John Dee, a famous astronomer. He chose the best day for her coronation ceremony, the 15th of January, 1559. Elizabeth was loved by the people, but she was still in danger. The kings of France and Spain wanted to invade England and bring back the Catholic faith. The young queen was alert, clever and prudent. She carefully chose advisers who were honest, loyal and experienced. William Cecil was Elizabeth's Secretary of State and her most important minister. He was her dear friend and she trusted him completely. Cecil served her for 40 years. Elizabeth was very wise to choose Matthew Parker as Archbishop of Canterbury. He established a moderate Church of England and created a compromise between Catholics and extreme Protestants. She also chose Lord Robert Dudley to be part of her court. He was her childhood friend and sweetheart and remained one of her favourites for many years. Elizabeth was a strong ruler. England was now a Protestant country. The Act of Supremacy made her head of the Church of England. All priests had to use the Book of Common Prayer. The Queen liked meeting her people and was always kind to the old and the sick. She and her court frequently went on tours or 
progresses around the country to visit noble subjects. It was an honor to be part of a royal tour. However, the cost of entertaining the queen and her court was astronomical, and several nobles went bankrupt. Mary Stuart was Elizabeth's cousin and her most dangerous rival. She was a Catholic, and many Catholics wanted Mary to be the Queen of England. Mary was born in Scotland. She was the daughter of James V, King of Scotland, and Mary Guise, a French noblewoman. Mary became queen when she was only one week old. Since there were political problems in Scotland, Mary went to France at the age of five. She had a happy childhood in the luxurious French court. She married the French dauphin Francis, and became Queen of France for a short time. In 1560, her husband, the young King of France, died, and she returned to Scotland. Scotland was a Protestant country, but the Scots accepted her as their queen. Mary was very beautiful, charming. And fun-loving. This worried Queen Elizabeth. At this time, something terrible happened. Elizabeth caught smallpox, a disease that killed many people in those days. She was dangerously ill for many days. Elizabeth's German doctor saved her life. Smallpox scars remained on Elizabeth's face all her life. She always wore white powder and cosmetics to hide the scars. Parliament wanted Elizabeth to marry as soon as possible. It was important to have an heir to the Tudor throne. Several foreign monarchs wanted to marry Elizabeth: the Archduke of Austria, Ivan the Terrible, Tsar of Russia, the King of France, and the King of Spain. Many noblemen of her court wanted to marry her too. Sir Christopher Hatton loved her so much that he never married. However, Elizabeth spent most of her time with Robert Dudley, her favorite companion. Elizabeth was not interested in marriage. She feared that a foreign king was dangerous for England, and she did not want to divide her power with anyone. In 1566, Robert Dudley, the Earl of Leicester, said, "I really believe the Queen will never marry." He was right. However, Parliament insisted. One day, Elizabeth became angry and said, "I am already bound unto a husband, which is the Kingdom of England." Elizabeth was afraid of a bad marriage. She had the example of her mother and of her cousin Mary Stuart. After returning to Scotland, Mary married her cousin Lord Darnley in 1565. Soon after the marriage, she hated him. Early in 1567, Darnley was killed. Many people suspected Mary and her lover, the Earl of Bothwell. When she married the Earl of Bothwell, the Scots were furious, and she escaped to England. Mary was now a real danger for the Queen. She was on English soil. Catholic nobles began plotting against Elizabeth in favor of Mary. Elizabeth decided to imprison Mary in a remote castle. She remained there for nineteen years. Other plots against Elizabeth were discovered, but she didn't want to execute her cousin. In 1586, Mary was finally accused of treason, and in 1587, she was beheaded. In 1492, Christopher Columbus, an Italian navigator who sailed from Spain, discovered the New World. Now there were new countries to colonize. During the 1500s. Spain and Portugal controlled sea travel on the Atlantic Ocean. England and other countries wanted to discover new trade routes to reach the Pacific Ocean. This was Elizabeth's biggest preoccupation, 
and she sponsored many voyages. Spain was the richest and most powerful country in Europe. Its empire extended to the West Indies, Central and South America. Spain and Portugal shared their treasures with the Pope in Rome. The Spanish explorers took gold, silver, jewels and other riches from the natives and transported them to Spain on their galleons. Each galleon carried immense treasure. Many Elizabethan captains and sailors were pirates, but they were called privateers. They had permission from the Queen to attack ships and take their treasure, which they divided with her. This was a common practice at that time. Francis Drake, Sir John Hawkins and Thomas Cavendish were three famous privateers. Elizabeth affectionately called Drake my pirate. Hawkins became the first Englishman to trade in African slaves. Elizabeth asked Francis Drake, an expert navigator, to sail across the South Atlantic, attack Spanish galleons and take their treasure. She also wanted him to find new trade routes. Drake left Plymouth in 1577 on his ship, the Golden Hind, and sailed south. He attacked several Spanish galleons on the South American coast. Then he sailed up the Pacific coast and landed in Northern California in 1579. He stayed there a month and claimed California for Queen Elizabeth. Today, this place is called Drake's Bay, California, near San Francisco. In 1936, an old metal plate was found near Drake's Bay with these words on it. Be it known to all men, June 17, 1579, by the grace of God, and in the name of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth of England. Forever I take possession of this kingdom to be known unto all men as Nova Albion. Francis Drake No one knows if this metal plate was Drake's or not. Drake then sailed across the Pacific Ocean and reached the East Indies. From there, he sailed around the Cape of Good Hope and returned to England in 1580, after three long years. Drake became the first Englishman to circumnavigate the globe. His voyage is memorable because he navigated in very difficult and dangerous conditions. He had no real maps. Queen Elizabeth was extremely pleased with his results and knighted him. She also gave him a special sword to use on England's enemies. Drake did not only bring back immense treasures, he also brought back new foods and spices. Pineapples, tomatoes, bananas, coconuts, peppers and chilies. Spices were very important because they preserved food and improved its taste. English colonization in North America began in 1584. Sir Walter Raleigh, a courageous soldier and explorer, was one of Elizabeth's favorites. He sailed to North America and set up the Virginia Colony in honor of Elizabeth, the Virgin Queen. Three years later, 117 men, women and children arrived on Roanoke Island in the Virginia colony. Living conditions were very difficult and many Indians were unfriendly. By 1590, the colony was abandoned. No one knew what happened to the colonists. Sir Walter Raleigh brought back potatoes and tobacco from the Virginia colony. He introduced pipe-smoking to the Elizabethan court, and it soon became popular. 
This was the beginning of the tobacco trade and industry. England and Spain were enemies for many years. The King of Spain, Philip II, was angry with Elizabeth for several reasons. The religious conflict was a growing problem, and Philip wanted to bring back the Catholic faith to England. For many years, English pirates and privateers attacked Spanish galleons and took their rich treasure. This exasperated Philip. In 1585, Elizabeth sent an army to help Dutch Protestants fight the Spanish. When Mary Stuart was beheaded, Philip was furious. He decided to invade England and take the throne from Elizabeth. The Pope strongly supported his plan. The Spanish Armada had about a hundred and thirty big ships and about twenty-eight thousand men. It was commanded by the Duke of Medina Sidonia. Elizabeth knew about Philip's plan. She ordered her best captains, Sir Francis Drake, John Hawkins, and Martin Frobisher. To prepare for the attack, England had a powerful navy of about 160 smaller ships and about 14,000 men. It was commanded by Lord Howard of Effingham, one of Elizabeth's cousins. In 1587, Drake attacked 30 Spanish galleons by surprise in Cadiz, Spain. I have singed the king of Spain's beard," he said proudly. His brilliant action pleased Elizabeth, and hurt the Spanish. Elizabeth did not like war, but she was determined to defend England. Before the Spanish attack, she visited her army and said, "I have the body of a weak woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king." She was a courageous woman. In July 1588, the impressive armada sailed up the English Channel. The weather was against the Spanish. The English attacked at Plymouth using new tactics to surprise the enemy. After several sea battles, the armada reached Calais. Lord Howard sent eight fire ships to Calais. When the Spanish saw them, they were terrified and immediately left the port. There were other sea battles, and both countries fought courageously. In the end, the Armada was badly defeated, and returned to Spain with only sixty-seven ships. This was a glorious victory for England, but it was a disaster for Spain. After this defeat. Spain slowly lost its sea power. By 1590, Elizabeth was almost sixty years old. She was still healthy and energetic, but her aspect changed. She wore a red wig, and her face was covered with heavy white makeup. Her teeth were in very bad condition. However, she was still vain. Every morning. She spent more than two hours getting ready. She had about three thousand magnificent dresses and innumerable splendid jewels. She was always very careful with her personal hygiene, and took a bath once a month. She hated bad odors and loud noise. Elizabeth's court was a center for playwrights, artists, and musicians. Edmund Spenser's famous work, *The Fairy Queen*, was dedicated to Elizabeth. English drama flourished during this period. William Shakespeare was born on the twenty-third of April, fifteen sixty-four, in Stratford-upon-Avon. His father was a glove maker. He attended school at Stratford until he was fifteen. When he was eighteen. He married Anne Hathaway, and they had three children. He went to London in about 1587, before the Sea Battle of the Spanish Armada. 
With England's brilliant victory over the Armada, the great English literary renaissance began, and Shakespeare became the most famous English writer of all time. In London, he worked as an actor and began to write plays and poetry. By 1592, William Shakespeare was famous in London. His plays were very successful, and he became a rich man. He wrote thirty-eight tragedies, comedies, and historical plays. Some of his best-known plays are Hamlet, Macbeth, The Merchant of Venice, A Midsummer Night's Dream, and Romeo and Juliet. He and his group often performed for Queen Elizabeth and her court. People of all social classes started going to the theatre. In London, open-air theatres became very popular. Shakespeare's spectators were a noisy crowd. They talked, laughed, shouted, ate, and drank during the performances. In open-air theatres, plays began in the afternoon when there was plenty of light. When it rained, many of the spectators got wet. Women's roles were played by young men. Because women did not act in the theatre, Shakespeare's plays were performed at the Globe, the Swan, and the Rose theatres. Shakespeare died on his birthday in 1616, and was buried in Stratford upon Avon. Other important Elizabethan playwrights were Ben Jonson and Christopher Marlowe. Elizabeth's last favourite. Was the handsome Earl of Essex? She loved him dearly, although he was thirty-four years younger than her. She made him a military leader, but he betrayed her. He was accused of treason and beheaded in 1601. In 1603, Elizabeth was seventy years old. She ate very little and was weak. She died on March twenty fourth, sixteen o three, and was the last Tudor monarch. She named James the sixth of Scotland, the son of Mary Stuart, heir to the throne. Her people mourned her for a long time. Her reign lasted forty four years. Under Elizabeth, trade grew, Spain was defeated, and England. Became a European power.